John. So in preparing for this speech, I had trouble finding inspiration on what speech I was going to give So what I did is I looked to those who inspire me most. Here I have a pictures of my three boys. We have Doodoo, Squishy, and Googly Bear. <laughs> better, better known as Liam, Rory, and Avery. Soon thereafter, consulting with my inspirations, I remembered about a speech I had seen on TedTalks.com by Jamie Oliver, who is a renowned celebrity chef and, like Sarah said, a food revolutionary. His speech was on presenting kids with nutritional facts, eating healthy, and childhood obesity. I also watched two other speeches, one by Pastor Steve Willis, who was agreeing with Jamie Oliver's views, and a second by Minister Andrew Lansley, whose speech was disagreeing with Jamie's views. But I'm going to be focus focusing on Jamie Oliver's speech about childhood obesity. Sarah, could you read me that number? 25 million, John. That's right. 25 million kids and teens in the United States are overweight or at risk of becoming overweight. Having not been the brightest banana in the bunch myself, I realized that my biggest weapon in life was determination, enthusiasm, hands-on, and actions speak louder than words approach my father taught me. And I wanted to get this across to others, especially those interested in food, says Jamie Oliver in his book, Jamie's Kitchen. And that's exactly what he did in his speech. The three main points I'm going to talk to you today about are statistics of childhood obesity, how to make a change at home, and how to make a change in elementary schools and in the marketplace. Roughly one third of all children in the United States are overweight, states <coughs> Maria Alma of Food and Family Magazine. There are many solutions to this. Parents, encourage playtime with your children at least 60 minutes a day. Have at least one sit-down meal with your entire family, no TV, no music, no distractions, and be a role model to your kids. Don't tell them they can't have chips in a soda, and then you go and watch TV while you're eating a bag of chips and drinking a soda. 30 years ago, food was local and freshly produced. Now it's mostly processed and full of additives and flavorings. Childhood obesity has nearly tripled in the last 30 years. Now here's a diagram that Sarah also mentioned, but it's the causes of death in the United States. Heart disease is at the top in red. The statistics in red are conditions caused by diet and obesity. Milk is served two times a day at schools here in the United States, which is good, but it's not just plain milk. It's strawberry and it's chocolate milk. Those two flavors are by far the favorites. They're full of colorings, flavorings, and sugars. About eight tablespoons a day. So if your children have eight tablespoons of sugar a day, they go to school 180 days out of the year, and they're in elementary school for about five years. That's about 225 pounds of sugar. I had the opportunity to talk with Dr. Vincent Leverett, a local doctor, and he said about one in seven children locally that come into his practice are overweight. Many generations of Americans haven't grown up in the food environment where they've been taught to cook or knowledge about food. This can be changed by helping at home. It needs to be a family effort, never single out children, and always stay positive. We need to celebrate their success. When they ask for an apple instead of a cookie, praise them, give them attention. Never focus on appearance or a number on a scale. This can cause loss of hope. The average kid consumes half the amount of foods and veggies that is needed daily, says Elizabeth Pivanka in an article in Parents Magazine. <coughs> you can change this by involving your children in the food that they eat. Have them go shopping with you. Let them pick out the fruits and vegetables they want. If they want a banana, have them peel it. If they want grapes, have them pluck it off the stem. It gets them involved in it. It's more likely to have them eat these healthier foods. Also, I found a good book that I read to my kids, and I'm sure parents in here have seen this, it's called The Very Hungry Caterpillar. It teaches kids that you don't need to eat and eat and eat until you have a stomach ache. You know, you just eat a small portion meal if you're hungry in a few hours, you know, eat another small portion meal. I'll pass it around for you guys to look at. 
31 million kids eat school meals twice a day for 180 days out of the year. So it's safe to say school meals play a large role in children's diets today. Schools need to get rid of the junk food and replace them with healthy meals. These meals need to include a protein, a starch, a veggie, and for dessert, some sort of fruit. They also need to supply utensils. Did you know most schools don't even supply children with utensils to eat with? This invokes hands eating with your hands, which most fast food restaurants, you use your hands to eat with. This invokes healthy eating. Also, two one-hour classes a day, and this could be solved. Most kids don't know the difference between a tomato or a potato, like Sarah stated earlier. Also, supermarkets need food ambassadors, someone that can help you shop, show you how to cook quick, tasty, tasty seasonal meals <coughs> for people who are on the go. They're inexpensive to employ. They're not a manager position. They're not a, a CEO or whatever. They're just a regular old employee with a little bit of food knowledge. Now that I've mentioned the three points of Jamie Oliver's speech, statistics of childhood obesity, how to make a change at home, and how to make a change at elementary schools in the marketplace. I hope you have all been inspired to start cooking and eating healthy, and that if you learn a new healthy recipe, to teach it to a few friends. Because if one person teaches three people, teaches three of their friends, that only has to repeat itself 25 times to span the entire population of America.